Kirill Dmitriev, the chief executive officer of Russia's Sovereign Wealth Fund, was among the Russians who tried to make contact with the incoming administration. In early December, a business associate steered Dmitriev to Eric Prince, a supporter of the Trump campaign and an associate of senior Trump advisor Steve Bannon. Dmitriev and Prince later met face-to-face -face in January 2017 in the Seychelles and discussed U.S.-Russia relations. During the same period, another business associate introduced Dmitriev to a friend of Jared Kushner, who had not served on the campaign or the transition team. Dmitriev and Kushner's friend collaborated on a short, written reconciliation plan for the United States and Russia, which Dmitriev implied had been cleared through Putin. The friend gave that proposal to Kushner before the inauguration, and Kushner later gave copies to Bannon and incoming Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. On December 29, 2016, then-President Obama imposed sanctions on Russia for having interfered in the election. Incoming National Security Advisor Michael Flynn called Russian Ambassador Sergei Kozlyak and asked Russia not to escalate the situation in response to the sanctions. The following day, Putin announced that Russia would not take retaliatory measures in response to the sanctions at that time. Hours later, President-elect Trump tweeted, Great move on delay by V. Putin. The next day, on December 31st, 2016, Kislyak called Flynn and told him the request had been received at the highest levels and Russia had chosen not to retaliate as a result of Flynn's request. On January 6, 2017, members of the intelligence community briefed President-elect Trump on a joint assessment, drafted and coordinated among the Central Intelligence Agency, FBI, and Page 8, National Security Agency, that concluded with high confidence that Russia had intervened in the election through a variety of means to assist Trump's candidacy and harm Clinton's. A declassified version of that assessment was publicly released that same day. Between mid-January 2017 and early February 2017, three congressional committees, the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, HPSCI, the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, SSCI, and the Senate Judiciary Committee, SJC, announced that they would conduct inquiries, or had already been conducting inquiries, into Russian interference in the election. Then FBI Director James Comey later confirmed to Congress the existence of the FBI's investigation into Russian interference that had begun before the election. On March 20th, 2017, in open session testimony before HPSCI, Comey stated, I have been authorized by the Department of Justice to confirm that the FBI, as part of our counterintelligence mission, is investigating the Russian government's efforts to interfere in the 2016 presidential election, and that includes investigating the nature of any links between individuals associated with the Trump campaign and the Russian government and whether there was any coordination between the campaign and Russia's efforts. As with any counterintelligence investigation, this will also include an assessment of whether any crimes were committed. The investigation continued until then-Director Comey for the next seven weeks until May 9, 2017, when President Trump fired Comey as FBI director in action which is analyzed in Volume 2 of the report. On May 17, 2017, Acting Attorney General Rod Rosenstein appointed the special counsel and authorized him to conduct the investigation that Comey had confirmed in his congressional testimony, as well as matters arising directly from the investigation and any other matters within the scope of 28 CFR section 600.4a, 
which generally covers efforts to interfere with or obstruct the investigation. President Trump reacted negatively to the special counsel's appointment. He told advisors that it was the end of his presidency, sought to have Attorney General Jefferson, a.k.a. Jeff, Sessions unrecuse from the Russia investigation and to have the special counsel removed and engaged in efforts to curtail the special counsel's investigation and prevent the disclosure of evidence to it, including through public and private contacts with potential witnesses. Those and related actions are described and analyzed in Volume 2 of the report. The Special Counsel's Charging Decisions In reaching the charging decisions described in Volume 1 of the report, the office determined whether the conduct it found amounted to a violation of federal criminal law chargeable under the Principles of Federal Prosecution. See Justice Manual Section 9-27.000 at SEC 2018. The standard set forth in the Justice Manual is whether the conduct constitutes a crime. If so, whether admissible evidence would probably be sufficient to obtain and sustain a conviction. Page 9. And whether prosecution would serve a substantial federal interest that could not be adequately served by prosecution elsewhere or through non-criminal alternatives. See Justice Manual, Section 9-27.220. Section 5 of the report provides detailed explanations of the office's charging decisions, which contain three main components. First, the office determined that Russia's two principal interference operations in the 2016 U.S. presidential election, the social media campaign, and the hacking and dumping operations violated U.S. criminal law. Many of the individuals and entities involved in the social media campaign have been charged with participating in a conspiracy to defraud the United States by undermining through deceptive acts the work of federal agencies charged with regulating foreign influence in U.S. elections, as well as related counts of identity theft. See United States v. Internet Research Agency et al., Number 18-CR-32, DDC. Separately, Russian intelligence officers who carried out the hacking into Democratic Party computers and the personal email accounts of individuals affiliated with the Clinton campaign conspired to violate, among other federal laws, the Federal Computer Intrusion Statute, and they have been so charged. See United States v. Netic Show et al., number 18-CR-215, DDC. Redacted. Second, while the investigation identified numerous links between individuals with ties to the Russian government and individuals associated with the Trump campaign, the evidence was not sufficient to support criminal charges. Among other things, the evidence was not sufficient to charge any campaign official as an unregistered agent of the Russian government or other Russian principal. And our evidence about the June 9, 2016 meeting and WikiLeaks releases of hacked materials was not sufficient to charge a criminal campaign finance violation. Further, the evidence was not sufficient to charge that any member of the Trump campaign conspired with representatives of the Russian government to interfere in the 2016 election. Third, the investigation established that several individuals affiliated with the Trump campaign lied to the office and to Congress about their interactions with Russian-affiliated individuals and related matters. Those lies materially impaired the investigation of Russian election interference. The office charged some of those lies as violations of the Federal False Statements Statute. Former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn pleaded guilty to lying about his interactions with Russian Ambassador Kislyak during the transition period. George Papadopoulos, 
a foreign policy advisor during the campaign period, pleaded guilty to lying to investigators about inter alia, the nature and timing of his interactions with Joseph Misud, the professor who told Papadopoulos that the Russians had dirt on candidate Clinton in the form of thousands of emails. Former Trump Organization attorney Michael Cohen pleaded guilty to making false statements to Congress about the Trump Moscow project. Redacted. And in February 2019, the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia found that, page 10, Manafort lied to the office and the grand jury concerning his interactions and communications with Konstantin Kilimnik about Trump campaign polling data and a peace plan for Ukraine.